figure this out so it works. Can you hear me? Is that okay? Um, thank you for coming. My name is Jenna Davis, and I'm the CEO of the Cook Islands Financial Services Development Authority. Um, we're going to talk about the Cook Islands this afternoon as an offshore finance center and um, give, get into some more specific information regarding asset protection. I'll turn that over partway through to Anthony Will, who's the managing director of Cook Islands Trust Limited. Um, the Cook Islands has a motto of last heaven on earth. That's a picture of the main island where the trust companies are located. Um, a lot of people have been asking this week, where are the Cook Islands? As you can see, they're northeast of New Zealand, south of Hawaii, equidistant from the equator. Um, in 1888, they were a British protectorate. In 1901, they became part of New Zealand. And then in 1965, they became self-governing. And they are what is called in free association with New Zealand. And what that means is that Cook Islanders hold um, New Zealand passports, they're New Zealand citizens, and New Zealand is supposed to take care of the Cook Islands' defense and foreign affairs. Uh, the reality is they don't need any defense and they handle their own foreign affairs. Um, and they are part of the Commonwealth, oh, going the wrong way. Um, the Cook Islands are part of Polynesia, as I just um, noted, they have New Zealand citizenship. There's about 17,500 people that live in the Cook Islands with 10,000 on that main island that I showed you. And there are 80 to 100,000 that live overseas. Um, Cook Islanders are very educated. Most of them have um, done their education secondary and tertiary in New Zealand or Australia. Um, in terms of the trust company employees, um, we have a very active law society and Cook Islands accountants group. Most of the attorneys are from New Zealand. Um, there's a couple of us, myself included, that have been to law school in the US, Australia, the UK, other places. And we are one of the newest STEP chapters. So for those of you not familiar with STEP, it's the Society of Trust and Estate Practitioners. We have a democratically elected parliamentary Westminster system, very similar to New Zealand, the UK, some of the um, territories in um, the Caribbean. We have a 24-member parliament. We have a prime minister. Um, our ultimate court of appeal is the Privy Council in New Zealand. And we have New Zealand High Court, er, in the UK, I'm sorry. And we have New Zealand High Court judges that sit on the courts. And the financial services sector began about 30 years ago. Um, it was largely born out of demand from corporations in New Zealand and Australia. They were taking advantage of tax loopholes, and it was essentially a lot of company work. And eventually those tax loopholes closed up, and the Cook Islands had to figure out what do we do um, to differentiate ourselves and what services can we offer going forward. And what they did at that stage was um, create asset protection provisions that they included into their Trust Act, which Anthony will go into more detail about. And today we offer trusts, foundations, companies, LLCs. We'll be passing captive insurance legislation in the next few weeks. And in general, we have wealth management um, services for clients. Um, the Cook Islands, this is a quote from the Executive Secretary of the Asia Pacific Group on money laundering. The Cook Islands have emerged as a leader in the fight against money laundering and terrorist financing within the region. Um, certainly the regulatory framework and the robust legislation that we have has come um, under scrutiny in the last few weeks due to what some call the offshore leaks case uh, or situation. We call it a theft of information. Um, our regulatory agencies are the Financial Supervisory Commission and the Financial Intelligence Unit, which now falls under the FSC. That came into existence in 2003. It replaced um, what was previously known as the Offshore Commissioner. And the Financial Supervisory Commission was the response to the OECD FATF changes in regulations that all um, offshore finance centers found themselves um, needing to become compliant with. And it's an independent body responsible for the supervision of regulated financial entities and financial services in the Cook Islands. So they come in every year, um, do compliance and auditing checks um, under our Financial Transactions Reporting Act, and they do that every year um, for the trust companies and the banks. 
And the point with them is to make sure that they have a robust licensing regime with a strong emphasis on corporate governance. There's al there was also the establishment of the Coordinating Committee Against Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing. Um, there was a move for the offshore industry to work more closely with the regulators and determining what worked with client uh, situations and how everyone could make sure they were changing their policies and procedures internally to be compliant. Um, there's active participation in the AML forums, such as the Asia Pacific Group, Egmont. Um, our commissioner serves on the board of the Offshore Banking Supervisors Group, and they work on sector capacity development. Cook, the Cook Islands is the only jurisdiction in the Asia Pacific Group that has no non-compliant ratings against the FATF's 40 plus 9, uh, and that was part of the results of the 2009 mutual evaluation report that everyone went through. Um, we are number two behind only Singapore and the US. Um, and as you can see by this chart, that we were ahead of New Zealand, Hong Kong, Canada, um, Samoa, and Australia as well, which is not on this list. The tax information exchange agreements and DTAs that we all have, um, that we're dealing with under the Global Forum, we have 17 TIEAs in force, several more in process. We do not have one with the US. Um, they have not approached us for one. Um, I'm sure they'll get to us eventually, but that's just one that we don't have at this stage. Nor do we have one with China. We haven't been approached by them either. Um, we have requested a double taxation agreement with China and the United Kingdom um, for different services that we'd like to do that can better be handled if we had a double taxation agreement. We finished our Global Forum Peer Review Phase 1 in June. Our report was released. We had a very positive report. And we won't have Phase 2 until early 2014. So who uses the Cook Islands? Um, as we heard yesterday 